As previously indicated, with a name like causal loop diagram, one would think there ought to be a loop in the diagram somewhere. This video will present the two basic types of loops, show how to tell one from another, and provide a few additional tidbits that you are likely to find useful when developing causal loop diagrams. One type of loop is the growth loop, which may also be referred to as a reinforcing loop. Consider the situation with a savings account. There is some amount of money in the savings account, referred to as the principal. If time stops, the principal doesn't change. Principal is therefore stock. Principal interacts with the interest rate to create interest. Note that the principal and interest rate both add to or move interest in the same direction. That is, as principal increases, interest increases, and as interest rate increases, interest increases. The reverse is also true. Periodically, depending on the type of account and institution the interest is computed and added to the principal, making it larger. Note that even if interest gets smaller, it still adds to the principal. This is why things become clearer when stocks are differentiated from other variables. The plus loop in the center is the normal indication for a growth loop, and the arrows are in the direction of the influences. It is also helpful to label loops for reference, both sequentially and with a meaningful label that describes the nature of the loop. The other type of loop is a goal-seeking loop, also sometimes referred to as a balancing loop. Consider any situation where we have some current state and a desired goal. The current state is something that won't change rapidly and will remain what it is even if time is stopped, so it's a stock. The difference between the current state and the goal serves as a basis for action. As the goal increases, it influences action to move in the same direction. As the current state moves in the direction of the goal, reduces or subtracts from action. The action is intended to move the current state toward the goal, so the impetus for action should be less in the next cycle. The minus loop in the center is the normal indication for a balancing loop, and the arrows are in the direction of the influences. It is also helpful to label loops for reference, both sequentially and with a meaningful label that describes the nature of the loop. All goal-seeking loops have goals which should be explicitly identified. Emergence is the concept that properties arise from the interactions within the system that are not part of any of the individual elements of the system itself. The structure for the savings account previously encountered exhibits the characteristic of growth, though none of the individual components alone exhibit that characteristic. Growth is an emergent characteristic of the set of interactions within the system. The goal-seeking structure exhibits the characteristic of balance though none of the individual components alone exhibit that characteristic. Balance is an emergent characteristic of the set of interactions within the system. This is why we study the whole in addition to the elements and their interactions. There are several additional aspects of causal loop diagrams that are noteworthy. It is quite easy to tell one loop from another if one simply counts the number of negative influences around a loop. If the number is odd, then the loop is a balancing loop. If the number is zero or even, then the loop is a reinforcing loop. From time to time, the influence between two elements happens with a significant delay. This is generally indicated by placing two vertical bars on the influence or simply including the word delay. Remember that causal loop diagrams are simply qualitative representations of interactions. If you want to explicitly understand the quantitative nature of a set of interactions, then you will need to develop a stock and flow model with associated numeric values and simulate it. Please see the stock and flow diagram video for additional information. It is hoped that you have found this video informative and you are invited to join the Systems Thinking World discussions on LinkedIn at the link provided.